So now we're going to have a look at how we find the mean and the standard deviation of a binomial distribution. Usually we are using this to tell if a binomial model is fit to suit a situation that we have tested in reality. Now we would expect a slight difference between what we were expecting and what we get in our test, but any major differences would probably indicate that the model it might not be suitable. So we have three formulas, well it's actually only two formulas. So the mean is found by using NP. The variance is found by using NP times 1 minus P. And from our numerical measures section, we have that the standard deviation is equal to the square root of the variance, so the square root of our NP 1 minus P. Remember that we get these values from our distribution, where N is the number of trials, so we're talking about N being the number of trials that we have, and P being the probability of success. So, in our example, we've got Sybil is a student who travels to and from university by bus each weekday. So we've got each weekday and they're travelling to and from university. He believes that the probability of having to wait more than six minutes for a bus is 0.4. So if we were to try and write that as a distribution, we'd have x squiggle b, remembering that our x is that we have to wait more than six minutes. That's what we're looking at here. N, our number of trials, well, we've got five weekdays and they're going to and from university, which means in total we've got 10 journeys. And the probability that we're having to wait more than six minutes is 0.4. And then we're asked to find the mean and the standard deviation for the number of times that he has to wait more than six minutes in one week. So for the mean, remember that we do n times p. So in this case here, that's going to be 10 times 0 0.4, which gives us 4. Now for the standard deviation, we can't find that straight away. We have to first find the variance, which remember is going to be n p times 1 minus p, which gives us 10 times 0 0.4 times 0 0.6, which ends up giving us hopefully 2.4, just popping it in my calculator to double check, times 0 0.6, yes 2.4, but this is the variance, we want the standard deviation, so then we have to square root our variance, so square root the answer, which gives us 1.55 to three significant figures. So now this is the situation that they've actually tested. So they were looking at a 13 week period, the number of times, and remember that this is out of 10, each week is out of 10. We've got the 13 weeks there and each one of those is out of 10. How, uh, he had to wait more than six minutes for the bus. So we can see here that in the first week, he had to wait more than six minutes four times out of the total of his 10 journeys. In week two, he had to wait eight times more than six minutes out of the 10 journeys. Week three, it was eight again. Week four, it was nine. So we've got there our 13 weeks worth of data. And we're trying to see if this data supports the belief that the probability to wait more than six minutes to catch a bus is 0.4 and that they are independent from time of day and direction of travel. So all we have to do here, like we had in the numerical measure section, is we need to find the mean and the standard deviation of the amount of times that he's having to wait more than six minutes. So we've got four for the first week, eight for the second week and so on. Just going to put these all into list one. Again, as we always do, double check that you've put the data in your calculator correctly. Then we go to calc, check that your set says list one one because we don't have any frequencies, we've just put a list of numbers in. 
And then we only have one variable, which is the amount of times he has to wait more than six minutes. So we click on one var. So we can see there that our mean is 3.92 and we can also see the standard deviation be careful because this isn't the population of standard deviations this is only a sample of 13 weeks so we're using our sx so the standard deviation remember that this is sx that we are writing down is 3.17 and then we need to make a comparison so we can see from the means we have 3.92 and we have 4. Now they're quite close to each other. So the mean number of times Oop, Sibylla. has to wait more than six minutes in the 13 weeks does fit the model as we said before we weren't expecting to have exactly the same value because we expect some difference when we actually run the experiment However, if we have a look at the standard deviation, we've got 3.17 and we've got 1.55. So those values are quite different. If you think about the scale of the values as well, if we had numbers that were in the hundreds, then a difference of two wouldn't be a big difference. But because we've got quite small numbers, this is meaning that the difference of two, well, almost two, is quite a big difference. So here, well, 1.5-ish, isn't it? Uh, here, however, the standard deviation of the number of times he has to wait more than six minutes is more sorry uh, is larger which means that they are more varied so from this because we need both of the values to be almost the same. So from this, we can say that the model probably doesn't fit. Remember to be careful with making definite statements. Um, the reason why we can't make a definite statement is that this wasn't all the journeys that he ever took. Um, we only have a sample of the 13 weeks that he did it. And there might be something going on in those 13 weeks. Maybe there was roadworks. Maybe there was something going on. So that might have changed what, that, what the data was showing. So we need to be careful not to make a definitive statement because we don't know all the circumstances around how the data was collected. So I'd now like you to try the uh, now you try question remember to be careful to make sure that you are comparing both of them and make sure that you remember that the np1 minus p formula is for the variance and not the standard deviation but the standard deviation is a better comparison because we know that the standard deviation is the spread of the data whereas the variance is just the standard deviation squared so it does tell us something but the standard deviation tells us more we know what that is more tangibly so give the now you try question a go and then play the rest of the video. Okay, so hopefully you've given the now you try question a go. So here we've got stop off all chains of hotels. Guests are presented with the bills uh, for their stay when they check out. So here we've got two different models. We've got 16.0.2 and we've got 16.0.125. And we're asked to find the mean and the variance for both of these. I have also found the standard deviations just so we can have a comparison with them. 
So remember, for the mean, we're using n times p, which gives us 3.2. And for the variance, we're doing n times p times 1 minus p, which gives us 2.56 for the 16 0.2 model. This gives us a standard deviation of 1.6. For the other model, for the 16 0.125, we have 16 times 0.125 for the mean, which gives us 2. And for the variance, we have 16 times 0.125 times 0.875, which gives us 1.75 to three significant figures for the uh, variance and roughly about 1.32 for the standard deviation. So we can see that we have two different models, even though they're only slightly different with the probabilities. We can see that we're expecting more of the mean is higher in the first model and the second model is more consistent. So now we've got Stan, who travel, who's a travelling salesperson, always uses Stockoff Hotel. He holds one of its diamond customer cards and should qualify for special customer care. However, he regularly finds errors in his bill when he checks out. Each month during a 12-month period, Stan stays in a Stockoff Hotel on exactly 16 occasions. So as we had before, we have, we're going to have 12 numbers and each one of these 12 numbers is out of 16. So the maximum it could have been is 16 and each one is measuring the errors in his bill. So he records each month the number of occasions that his bill contains errors. So we can see here in the first month, two times that he stayed, uh, he had two errors out of 16. Uh, in the second month that he had 16 stays, he only had one error out of 16. Then the third month, he had four errors out of 16 and so on. So then we're calculating the mean and the variance of these 12 values. So again, we put all those numbers into the stats part of our calculator. If I just pop back in there, we can see the numbers there. We go to calc, check that your set says list 1, 1 because we don't have any frequencies. Then go into 1 var and we can see there the mean and in this part of the calculator, it doesn't give you the variance, so we have to write down our standard deviation. Remember that this is only a sample of 12 months. It's not every time that he's ever stayed there. So that gives us 1.59544807. And because I'm actually getting the marks for finding the variance, I haven't rounded that value. I've kept that whole number to make sure I don't have any rounding errors when I calculate the variance. And then remember to go from the standard deviation to the variance, you have to square it. So you can see here I've done 1.59544807 squared, which gave me 0 0.255. And then that value there was to three significant figures. So that's where I have done my rounding here. OK, so now we're having to compare our models. Well, if we have a look at the first model, the mean was 3.2 but the mean when we actually got it from the data was 2 so the means are different but if we have a look at the variance we've got 2.55 and we've got 2.56 for the two variances so the variances are quite similar so I've put a sentence here saying for the first model and I've made sure that I definitely they know which model I'm talking about I've just quickly wrote it down they have similar variance but different mean the second model which is this 16 0.2 sorry which is the 16 0.125 I've wrote it down here and then if we have a look at the numbers again the mean is 2 on the actual data and the mean was 2 exactly from the model so they have exactly the same mean but if we have a look at the variance we've got 2.55 and here we've got Oops, sorry, just go across a bit. 1.75. So we can see a difference in the variance. If we were asked to do this, sorry, if we were asked to do this in context, in this case, they haven't said in context. They've just said give a reason. If we had to do this in context, we couldn't just say variance and mean. Instead, we would have to say, looking at this, we would have to say that they have, uh, has a similar distribution Uh, in errors but it had a higher occurrence and then here for our second statement uh, 
we would say that they have the same occurrence uh, but if we have a look at the uh, standard deviations just to talk, so it's something that uh, we know what they're meaning that the model is more consistent so the data is more varied so but the model is more consistent than the data so just be careful with the language that you use and what you're asked to do if it's seen in context it's really wanting a bit more of a language that a normal person could understand someone without a statistical knowledge so don't use words like variance and mean use words like occurrences and the distribution of them um, just so that then people are more aware of what the values are talking about so because both of the models have a different error in them or a different thing that's different it probably means that neither of the models is going to be suitable so next time we're going to have a look at when it is appropriate to use the binomial model and under what circumstances it is appropriate thank you very much for listening